Today is a Whoops in the Dungeon day. I'm drinking coffee out of my Whoops in the Dungeon coffee mug. And welcome to Whoops in the Dungeon. The excitement never ends around here. Today we have an unboxing, and I don't know yet if I'm gonna do a mini review or save that till later, but it's a, it's a delightful day. We got past Christmas, we're into a new year and my Christmas present from New Zealand arrived. As you can see, I've got a parcel from Peter Jack, the Whip Man, in Timaru, New Zealand, and is appropriate for any excitement. Uh, I'm gonna be using a new whip, or, or a new uh, knife, uh, a buck knife that I picked up at, uh, as a Christmas present. So let's see if we can get this box open without damaging anything that's inside it. Peter uh, has taken a little bit of time and care with this order. Uh, I think I made the order in July, maybe June of last year. And I've bought over the two decades I've been dealing with Peter Jack many, many whips. Peter, as you, most of you know that follow this channel or follow, my, follow the Leather Journey channel, my other channel, know that I consider Peter one of the best whip makers in the world, if not the best whip maker in the world, uh, because if for nothing else, he's out, he's survived or outlived everyone else in that he started plaiting when he was 15 years old and he's now in his 46th year of plaiting. In fact, I already have an order in for his 47th year. Typically, I put an order together once a year. There's been some exceptions to that, but generally once a year. The thing with hand plaited whips is a whip maker can only make so many in a year is physically impossible to uh, to plat more than X number because of the time they take and how what goes into the process. I'm still figuring out the tape and the way this box opens. Looks like I got it. It was a box that was cut down and made to work and it's got bubble wrap and some whips inside. Let's see what we have. Okay, I these are tubs of conditioner. I have bought whips for two and a half decades from Peter. So these are the old style containers that he used to put his conditioner in and mine I used it all up, so I sent them back to him and said, hey, how about a refill? So he was kind enough to refill some of my tubs and send them back to me, which is really nice because that is magic goo that he makes. Uh, he makes a conditioner that's just wonderful. Okay, let's see what we have. Hopefully some interesting things. Okay, this, these are tied together. There's a reason for that. This should be, as some of you know that have followed this channel, I recently, after 24 years of throwing whips single-handed in the dungeon, decided I was going to learn two-handed work. And I started with two four-foot bull whips because that's what I had ready access to and then I was able to acquire dragon tails uh, that are almost a match set so I've been practicing with my dragon tails I've been practicing with floggers in fact recently I even got some poi uh, practice wands to practice with so that was just tied with a little strand of, of rue and I'll I'll use that. So, what I really needed though to extend what I'm doing was a match set, a true match set of signal whips. 
So this is a match set of four foot signal webs, which I'll be breaking in and working and practicing my uh, two hand work with. And it'll be a big advantage because my dragon tails aren't exactly a match set. And I'm hoping I can learn to do uh, six count Florentine successfully with these. Now I asked Peter to finish these with an English eye, which he has done. And that allows me to change out the cracker. So that's not a traditional finish for a signal whip, but I did that on purpose because uh, in the dungeon I play with so many different people and those that have followed this channel know that I don't use a cracker from one whip catcher to another whip catcher. I change crackers and use brand new crackers on uh, each whip catcher. Uh, now, if I'm gonna play regularly with the same person uh, and become a frequent play partner with them, I'll take a Ziploc bag and I'll put their crackers in the bag with their name on it and those crackers only get used on them. Well, when we move into the signal whip world and the, the cracker is platted into the whip, it's a different story when you go to change your cracker. So I asked him to plat an English eye into this whip and he's done that so that I can change my cracker out. And I'll change these crackers out because these aren't, this isn't the material that I like to use in the dungeon. But we now have a beautiful match set of signal whips that I'll be breaking in on this channel. And you'll get to see me throw them two-handed. So now let's see what else is in here. This was supposed to be a a three foot court, and it is. It's interesting now the way he finished it. Wow. He finished it. Um, never seen a court finished this way, but that'll be interesting to try to use. I'm gonna try to bring it in close. I was expecting the viper tongue, the two pieces of leather cut into a viper tongue to have been platted directly into the keeper. He made this one where um, he's got a permanent piece of leather platted into the keeper with kind of an eye. Uh, I won't call it an English eye, but it's a leather eye. And then it's made so that if I decide I don't like this weight of leather for the viper tongue, I can easily change that out uh, to a lighter piece of leather or even a heavier piece of leather. So that's quite an interesting design. It's the first court in 20 years of ordering from Peter. It's the first court from him that I've ordered. So that'll be, that'll be an interesting thing. And that almost, I'd have to ask him, but that almost feels like water buffalo that he used to cut that, that court tail out of. Now, here's the drum roll. I need a drum roll out there in YouTube land. This I've been waiting for mostly a year for. This is a bull whip, a four foot bull whip. And to commemorate, oh, he sent me some crackers, how nice. Uh, I keep telling him I don't use his style of cracker, but he's nice enough to keep sending them to me. So I'll pass those on. So this bull whip has several things that are special about it. One is if you look very closely, and I don't know if I can do it into the camera. Uh, starting with your plating year 44, Peter for me has platted the numerical number into the handle of his plating year. So I have 44, 45, this is whip number 46. So 46 in the handle makes this unique. Uh, the other thing that makes this unique is if you look carefully at the end of the handle in this first transition into the thong, you'll see 
some fancy plaiting work. Uh, Peter had a contract with Amazon for their new Lord of the Rings uh, series. It's like a continuation of Lord of the Rings or pre-Lord of the Rings. They contracted Peter to make a whip for the TV series that I think is on Amazon Prime. And I said, oh, Peter, can you make me a four foot replica of the whip that you made for the series? So, and I don't know how many of these he's made uh, or how many people asked him to make one like this, um, but that's what this is. This is the whip that was used in the TV series. If you watch that series, then maybe you've seen uh, the bull whip that he made for that series used. But I'd have to look this up in the whip platters book to, to tell you what this type of overlay platting is called. It has a name. It slips me because I'm not a whip platter. But it's going to be a really interesting whip to break in and throw, and I'm excited. I believe it's 20 plat. It might be 24, but I think, to me, it looks like 20 plat. Normally, he goes to a little bit higher plat count when he plats the number in the handle because it's easier to, uh, to make the number turn out than with 16 plat. So usually when he's doing this level of plaiting, he's working in 20 or 24 plat. I do have a 32 plat whip from him, but honestly, I like, I'm, I'm beginning to really like his 20 and 24 plat work if you can afford it. And you've probably noticed almost all the whips in my collection. It's just a me thing. Uh, I settled on many years ago uh, whiskey and saddle tan. So probably 99% of my whip collection is all whiskey and saddle tan. If I could march back 24 years from now and do it over, uh, there's some other strategies you could employ as you start to buy whips and collect whips for the dungeon, for dungeon play. And one of the things I would have done if I could go back and redo my leather journey would have been, I would have gone a color pattern for a length of whip. So when I look in my toy bag and I'm looking for a three foot whip, all my three foot whips would have been whiskey and saddle tan. All my four foot whips, let's say would have been black and saddle tan. My five foot whips would have been red and saddle tan. Maybe whips longer than five foot would have been green and saddle tan. There would have been, I would have gone with a kind of a color coding so that in a dark, dim, wet dungeon, I wouldn't even have to, you know, try to carefully inspect the whip. I could grab a whip that's a certain color and know that that whip uh, is a certain length because length in dungeon play is very important because you're looking for a space in the dungeon that, you know, will accommodate the type of play that you're interested in doing or the scene that you're planning to develop. So that's helpful. Um, I didn't do that. So consequently, uh, I have to be very careful when I set up my scenes and to know what's in my toy bag and, and select the correct toy to use for uh, the play space that I have. Now, that's it for the unboxing. There's nothing left in the box. So we got a bullwhip, a quirt, and two matching signal whips. I'm excited. Now I have to start breaking them in, and I'll let you see some of that, but we won't bore you too much with that. As always, thanks for watching the Whoops in the Dungeon channel.